After making the whole wheat milk bread a couple months ago, I've been trying different recipes and perfecting this Japanese milk bread. Hi, I'm Jessie. In this video, I will also show you some important tips to make a perfect milk bread at home. That's coming up! First of all, bread pans. You can bake the bread in a regular loaf pan like this one, but I don't recommend it as the crust is thicker compared to the Pullman loaf pans. The common volume rate for Japanese white bread is between 3.8 and 4.2, meaning that if the pan can hold 2200 grams of water using the ratio 3.8, the dough should weigh 579 grams. To find out the volume of your pan, use a measuring cup filled with water and pour into the loaf pan. Fill it up. The total milliliter of the pan equals how many grams of water it can hold. Then you can use this formula to calculate the weight of the dough. Next, we can use baker's percentage to calculate each ingredient provided in the recipe. To make things easier, I've calculated the ingredients in grams for both sizes of the Pullman loaf pans. First, I'm going to show you how to make the bread using a stand mixer and one of the Japanese shaping methods to shape the dough. After adding all the ingredients except salt and butter, use the hook to incorporate the ingredients quickly to speed up the mixing process. Low speed for 2 minutes, then add salt. Switch to medium speed for 6 to 8 minutes. Take a small piece of the dough and gently stretch it out. If it becomes much more elastic and slightly translucent, but still can be torn apart, this is a good time to add butter. Add butter in 2 to 3 batches so that it's evenly distributed. Once the butter is almost incorporated, switch back to medium speed for 5 to 6 minutes. Do another window pane test. If the dough can be torn apart easily, then we need another 2 minutes of mixing. When it's smooth and translucent, it's ready for fermentation. While the recipe provides a specific time for fermentation, it's important to do a quick finger dent test to see if it has fermented enough to develop flavors. Press a finger into the dough. If the dent springs back slowly and partially, the dough is perfectly fermented and ready for shaping. Divide the dough into three parts using a digital scale. Fold and round each piece. Bench rest for 30 minutes. Today, I'm going to introduce one of the shaping methods. This U-shape method is good for making sandwiches. You can also check out my other video for the spiral shaping method. Take one piece of the dough and use a rolling pin to flatten the dough into a sheet. Pitch one end and fold the other end lengthwise. With the fold opening downwards, fold it into a U shape. Repeat the same process for other pieces. Make sure to do the last one and place it in the middle. Make sure all the ends of the dough hit the bread pan without large gaps. Shake the pan 1-2 to two times and transfer the bread to a cooling rack. Wait until it completely cools down before slicing. For the bread maker, add all the ingredients except yeast. Place the yeast into the automatic dispenser. 
select the pizza dough function to make the dough only. My bread maker takes 45 minutes. For this one, I used the spiral shaping method. If you are interested in learning more details, check the link in the description below. Unlike the stand mixer version, the final proofing temperature is 82 degrees Fahrenheit. If the temperature is too high, the texture is not so smooth. I have provided a lot of information and detailed instructions on our website. Please check on the link in the description below. I hope you find this video helpful. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on Facebook. Alright guys, until we eat again!